eat your faces this morning. Thank you for being here. <laughs> we did not have a lot of people last service, and we are sparse this service. So congratulations. Um, I should have a prize, but I don't. So my smile is your prize. I have one really important or announcement. On December 1st, Diane and Vance will have been married 50 years. 50 years. If you don't know who that is, uh, the guy with the white hair, yep, they're waving. 50 years. That's a long time. The second thing that I want to announce is in your bulletin, you have this calendar for, li or for Lent, for Advent, starting December 1st, we are going to do, we have been asked to do a reverse Advent calendar for the All People's Pantry. So if you remember, we did loads of love for the All People's Pantry and for advent for advent we're going to do food so you can do this a couple different ways you can just go and buy all this food bring it in the 24th on christmas eve or christmas day christmas eve because i we won't be here christmas day um, or you can do these handy dandy little qr codes that they have or you can bring it every saturday or sunday to church in uh, the month of December. So however you want to do this, the bottom of your bulletin, there should be, an, or of this handout, there should be an explanation if you want to know what the food, the All People's Pantry is, but here are the things that they need, and it is important to them and to me that people eat the kind of foods that they want to eat, and so this is one way that we do this, is through the reverse advent calendar so make sure and take your handout home uh, and that would be good also your i believe your bulletin inside your bulletin is another is other announcements in your communion or and your advent liturgy so when we start that make sure we did a two for one today so that's all the announcements that i why are you sitting in my seat are you preaching today Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, the decisions that have to be made. Oh, my. Good morning. Um, actually, there's quite a bit of uh, the, the announcement sheets in your bulletin have a lot of things, and they're coming up quickly. Um, the star tree out there, we need to have the stuff here by November 30th. If you're like me, unfortunately, I've had my stuff ready for two to three weeks. It sits by the front door and I walk by it every time. And I get here and I go, oh, I forgot my, my stuff. So this week, you need to bring it. Um, also on Saturday, this next Saturday, the holiday brunch which for me has always been one that actually puts me in the spirit of the season. Um, it's my start. It's something I truly enjoy, and I think, you know, let's have a lot of people there. Uh, there's also a flyer in here, so if you want to get poinsettias, and there's more that you can read on your own. So, Paul, it's your turn. Good morning. In your bulletin, you have an insert that looks like this. If you take that out and turn to the inside, we have the litany for the lighting of the Advent candle. Um, I'd like you to join me in the refrain that's printed in your bulletin. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. 
Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light of the world to see. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine in the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church gathered today. Advent is a time for the human heart to wait while trusting God's eternal time. For those waiting for answered prayer. For those waiting in the face of uncertainty. For those waiting for justice and mercy to reign. For all of us waiting for God's kingdom to come. This morning, we light the first candle, which, might, which reminds us that throughout history, God's people have spent time waiting, wandering and wondering about the timing of God's eternal plan. Like the people of old, we long for God's presence to illuminate the areas of life where we are called to wait. This morning, we echo the words of the psalmist, wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. creation, we declare that you are the eternal one. We confess to you, O Lord, that we might that we easily grow impatient when your word is to us when your word to us is to wait. Ignite within us a new and everlasting hope. We pray this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you rise, if you're able, for the opening prayer? Dear God, thank you for Mary, our Lady of Sorrows, and all the ways her story gives us hope, even and especially when our hearts are broken. Be with us this week as we walk through the shadows of suffering and light a candle of hope. Help us to notice the deep blue of the night sky just before dawn, and even though the stars may fall, guide us toward a new world full of healing and glory for all. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first hymn is number 196, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
Good morning. I'd like to invite the children to join me. And I'm going to take responsibility for the weather because God knew that we were starting our unfrozen theme this morning in the children's ministry. <laughs> and I needed snowflakes and snowmen, and it just all worked out except it really just, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you're all here, though. Um, two weeks from today is our program, so please come back for that. And our youth will be having a dinner after church, too, so it's a good day, December 10th. I don't know if you paid any attention to the hymn that we just sang, but it, it's actually one of my favorite Advent hymns. And the title was, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. That means we're waiting for Jesus to come. And we talked about that this morning, that we are having hope that Jesus will be coming. Uh, and we know that he already did come, but God promised that. And for those of you that were with us back in the spring when we talked about John Wesley and his brother Charles, uh, who were the founders of the Methodist Church, Charles wrote the words to that song, by the way. So that's a good little piece of trivia for you. So we're starting Advent. Advent is the time in the church where we get ready for Christmas to come. And we have some key words that we often use. When uh, Jessica and Cameron took care of the Advent candle today, they talked about waiting. And we are waiting for Christmas for sure. And we're waiting for hope today. We're going to have uh, God's love help to unfreeze our hearts today with hope. Now, every week of Advent, we are going to be building something, starting with what's in this bag today. So you're going to get one of these bags, and if you come back each week, I'm going to have something new for you to add to it, to create something that was part of Frozen. We talked about one of the characters that had a lot of hope, and that was, besides Anna, we decided Olaf also had hope, and I know this isn't Olaf. Uh, my daughter has my Olaf right now. So this is uh, another snowman that looks kind of hopeful, right? He looks happy and uh, like something good is going to happen. Well, you're going to build a snowman. Do you want to build a snowman? Sorry, couldn't help it. Okay. You're going to build a snowman starting with this. Hmm. He's got a hat. This guy lost his nose. He's supposed to have a nose on there. <laughs> and I'm going to give you something to fill it up with. Okay? So in your bag, you're going to fill it up with snow. Fake snow. And you're also going to be thinking about how you can fill yourself up with hope as you wait for Christmas. Hope is a good feeling, right? A feeling like you're excited for something to happen. And we know that God promised something good would happen for those people in the Old Testament, the Israelites that we talked about this morning too. God promised to send a, do you remember that M word? Messiah. messiah. A Messiah, a Savior, a Deliverer, a leader that would be with them and help them and restore them to God's favor. And that person that we talked about is one of the people who gave that message to the people was Isaiah, and he promised them that that Messiah would be coming. And our Bible verse today is from Psalm chapter 130, verse 5, I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. Say hope. Okay. Hope. So today I want you to be unfrozen. Here's his nose. I want you to be unfrozen with hope. And as you put your snowballs into your um, snowman today, I would like you to think of ways that you might be stuck or frozen and how you can turn that around this Advent. Like we might get frozen in our relationship with God if we stop coming to church. We might get frozen if we forget that Christmas is really about Jesus first and foremost. 
We might be frozen if we accidentally yell at our friend or we don't obey our mom or dad. Those are the things that we want to turn around and get unfrozen by, okay? And you can create a better relationship with God in the time when we are waiting for Christmas to come. So your snowman will be filled with snow and it'll be cold, but its scarf is God's hopeful promise that will keep it warm. And we thank God for all of the promises of Christmas. All of you up here, I do believe, have a box already. This is your Advent box, your unfrozen box. And when you open it up, you're going to have some directions on top. Make sure you read those. And then you're going to have a little calendar in here for the month of December. And then you're going to get a card. I just did December. Okay, so you're going to start December 1st, which is already Friday. So find this by Friday. And then every day you will have a little paragraph to read, a little devotion to get you ready for Christmas. And then you can take this snowflake sticker off because it's only half stuck. And you can put it on the date on your calendar to count up to Christmas, okay? So make sure you remember that will start on Friday. Okay, I'll get you your bag on your way down after we pray. And I'm really glad you're here. And I hope that you have the hope that Advent will give you. In Jesus' name, let's pray right now. Dear God, we thank you for our hope that is given by you. We thank you for the children that are here and those that couldn't be here. We thank you for the pretty snow, and we ask for safety for all those who are out in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, come on up and get your bag. Just take one. They're all exactly the same. Follow the directions inside, and next week we will add something more.
Good morning. I'm Linda Stroud, and I am a chairperson of our United Women in Faith group here at church, and we are sponsoring the holiday brunch Saturday morning, and I'm encouraging um, all women to come at 9.30 for a very good food, and we have a wonderful program planned. Dr. Schlichtemeyer, a retired ophthalmologist here in Omaha, is coming to give us a piano concert. And we're encouraging anyone, men, women, children, to come at 1015, and we will be here in the sanctuary for his concert. He plays the piano and um, does piano Christmas concerts at Christ Community Church also. And please, um, anyone coming for the brunch at 9.30, if you would call the church office tomorrow or by Thursday with your reservation. And we just ask that you bring uh, two items of food for the Pearl Food P Pantry. So we hope to see you. And if you have any questions, please see me after the service, and I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. I know where there is corn. If you turn to the back of your bulletin, you will see all the folks that we need to keep in our prayers. Are there any others that we need to hold up in prayer today? Yes. Okay, Diane's brother is in the hospital and they're waiting to see what kind of infection that he has. All right, let's go to our God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, on this day that we are here, this first Sunday of Advent, the day that we think about hope and what hope means to us, we pray that everything that we do, everything that we say, that it is pleasing to you. We hope that happens. We know that it doesn't always. But we hope to be the kind of people that you need us to be in this world. God, we have many folks before us who are sick, who are in the hospital, who are awaiting procedures, who are recovering from procedures, those who are in rehab, those who are in hospice. God, we pray for these folks. We pray that you will give them hope and that you will give them perseverance. God, we pray for their families who take care of them. We pray for the doctors and nurses and support staff. God, we pray that they use their talents to glorify you. God of love, our prayers. God, we pray for all of those who have lost loved ones, especially during the holidays, God. We know that it is hard, and we want to assure those who have lost loved ones that they can be both sad and joyous during this time, that it is not one, of one or the other. God, we pray that you will give these folks peace and hope as well. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for those who are in war-torn countries, those who are in areas of natural disasters, and those who, have, who are living in, in areas of political unrest. God, for those who are fleeing, we pray for sanctuary. For those who are staying, we pray for safety. For those who are fighting peace, for those whose hearts are breaking comfort, and for those who see no future hope, 
God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for those who take care of us, our first first responders and our military personnel. God, we pray that you will continue to give these folks courage. God of love. God, we pray for this church and the church universal. We pray that everything that we do is pleasing to you, that you help us to be the light out into the world. We pray for our ministry team. We pray for the folks that are here with us and those that are not with us. We pray that you will continue to help us be your hands and feet. God of love, hear our prayers. God, as we look toward the manger, help us find hope in the broken. God, we pray all of this in your son Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm double duty this morning. Please rise if you you can for the gospel. This is Mark chapter 13 verses 24 to 26. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the child of God coming in clouds with great power and glory. For the word of God in and around us, thanks be to God. Y'all can be seated. Advent is a time of year that I, it's one of those duplicitous times of year because we're super busy with all kinds of things, but yet we're awaiting the, this great gift to be found in the manger. And so they kind of work in tandem, the craziness with the slowdown, the sad with the joy, the darkness with the light. So happy Advent. This year, I announced last week that we are doing a series on Mary, the mother of Jesus, called the House of God. It's Mary, Jesus, and the meaning of Christmas. We've done studies by our series by the SALT Project before. If anybody is interested in following along with this series with the different Marys from different cultures and different um, religions, let me know and you email me and I can send you a copy of that so that you can follow along with us. So Advent is a Latin word and it, the the Latin word Adventus, meaning coming or arrival. Advent is a period of the next four weeks that gets us ready for Jesus to arrive. And for the next four weeks, we are focusing on centering our hearts on two things. First, what does it mean for us that Jesus was born? And second, What does it mean that God is coming again to fill the world with even more hope, more peace, more joy, and more love? This is a time of year when the church talks a lot about Mary. 
Mary means a lot to the church because she is the mother of Jesus. Mary is magical. The Salt Project writes that all over the world she's captured imaginations as the bearer of God or the house of God, but her identity doesn't stop there. She's also known by a host of other names, Our Lady of Sorrow, Our Lady of Guadalupe, the First Disciple, Our Lady of the Palm, and many more. What happens, though, when we talk, when the church talks about Mary, we've somehow constructed this image in our mind of this really poor, young, naive, kind of dumb, scared, lost, powerless, head-in-the-clouds teenage girl. The only statement that is true from that list that I just read you is that Mary was young. She was a devout Jew. She knew the stories of her ancestors. She knew the Torah. She had listened closely as she had been told those stories. She also had faith in God. And I would like to think that she had a personal relationship with God before she became Mary, the mother of Jesus. I would also like to think that she had seen the power and the movement of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit has always been, always is, and always will be. Mary was far more spiritual than the church gives her credit for. This Sunday, we are taking a look at Mary, Our Lady of Sorrows. It's appropriate to read from Mark 13th this Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of Hope. Mark 13 could be toted as the little apocalypse. I always say this word. I always have a hard time to get my brain to say apocalyptic. There we are. Apocalyptic, thank you, text causes concern. We think about the book of Revelations and we think about the mark of the beast and other scary images. We have uh, ap- apocalyptic. I'm seriously, my brain just hits like a stop apocalyptic books like the left behind series where folks are just riding on an airplane and they're like plucked off the plane one by one and vanish we're warned to look out for the antichrist and to not be fooled we are told to keep watch and get right with god because the end is near when there is another disaster natural disaster or when there's a war The truth of the matter is that the word apocalypse comes from the Greek, which means to reveal. What will be revealed to us in Mark 13? Now, there is no doubt that Jesus will be coming back, but we don't know when. In this gospel, we see John the Baptist. We see Jesus rejected by Nazareth. We see Jesus teaching in parables. We see Jesus predicting what will happen to him. We are told about the birth pains of the Messiah. Pain will turn to joy. Death will bring new life. We know that one of the disciples will betray Jesus, and we know that Jesus will die and be buried and will rise from the dead, but we are not told that in Mark. We are not told about Jesus' resurrection in Mark. But we know, because we have the full text to our, at our disposal, our job is to live as if we are certain that Jesus is coming back. To share the good news, to be the good news, to be the light. As I've preached the last two weeks, to let justice roll down like a mighty river. In the midst of all the waiting, though, life is going to happen. Life is hard. And Mary, as the Lady of Sorrows, acknowledges the pain of the world. As we look at pictures of Mary, she is painted in blue. Painting her in blue was an expression of devotion. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was remarkable. 
She was Jesus' mother. The profound bond between a mother and a child is the same between Mary and Jesus. Being the mother of Jesus meant that she nursed him, that she took care of him when he was sick, whispered bedtime prayers into his ear, taught him the stories of scripture, and suffered the agony of losing him too soon. In this way, Mary served as a comfort to grieving parents who has lost their children. Looking at this verse, the sun darkens and the moon will not give light. Mary is the comfort to those who are experiencing darkness in their life. When there is loss, we often think about what we should have done to not let the loss to not have incurred the loss. We ask ourselves what we could have done to prevent the loss. Mary had sorrows as well. On September 15th, that's the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows, Catholics are invited to contemplate Mary's seven sorrows. The first sorrow is the prophecy that Simeon has when he meets the baby Christ. Think about what he was told or what she was told. Her other sorrows include, include fleeing to Egypt so that her child would not be killed. Another sorrow was losing her child in the temple. How could a mother lose their child? Another sorrow was meeting Christ on the way to Calvary, standing at the foot of that cross, watching his body being taken down. And her final sorrow was burying Christ's body. What great pains she felt watching her child suffer. But on this Sunday, on this Sunday of hope, I would like you to close your eyes if you feel comfortable. If not, just bow your head down. Take a deep breath and exhale it slowly. And as you take another deep breath, and exhale it slowly. Listen to these words. After mourning, rejoicing. After strife, peace. God shall come to thee. Come, Emmanuel, come. Breathe out our despair. Breathe in our hope. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And ransom captive is Rael that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee. Oh, is May it be so. Amen. The ushers will now come forward for the offertory.
loving God, thank you for the many ways in which you provide for us food, family, friendship, housing, health, happiness, and ways to use our time and talents. We lift to you, too, the ways in which we, we remain in need of these things. God of generosity, help us to live this generosity in our, to others in our lives as we wait in hope for your revelation. Amen. Our closing hymn is, there's a song in the air, number 249. I leave you with this prayer that is in the Book of Common Prayer for Advent. Hear these words. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may celebrate aright the commemoration of the Nativity and may await with joy the coming in glory of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.